So what happened? First resources, share price jumped after profit source. Share price actually jumped 11%. What about Bumitama Agri? Profit more than doubled. Share price jumped 8.9% on an intraday basis. You know, palm oil stocks, yes, taken a whack, right? So for myself, I do own palm oil stocks also. And when we see that palm oil prices have trended like that, everything seems to be going haywire. At least there seems to be some stabilization right now. So today, if you are a shareholder of a palm oil company, or if you're looking for dividend investing, I think I have four key reasons as to why you should explore the palm oil sector. So if you're keen, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. It's been a busy week, that's why I'm filming this at night. But without further ado, let me share with you the first point as to why I'm keen to relook at palm oil sector, and that's because US dollar upcycle seems to be over. Now, as we all know, US dollar is the main reserve currency for the world, and a lot of commodities are denominated in US dollar. For palm oil, it's either US dollar or Malaysian ringgit. So if you see this explanation, you realize that there is usually an inverse relationship between dollar and commodity prices. Of course, the relationship is not perpetual. It's just for a short-term basis, it impacts the sentiment of commodities. So when we see US dollar strengthening like that over the last few months, that is naturally some headwind to demand destruction in commodities. But if you scrutinize towards the tail end, especially in November period for 2022, you realize that US dollar seems to be weakening. So if US dollar rate hike has peaked already, then quite possibly this headwind is no longer there and commodity prices as a whole might start rallying. And that's why palm oil prices, if you look closely at the last few months, it has been gaining ground, correct? And if you compare palm oil price to soybean, you realize that there seems to be a gap in terms of where it can climb until. In the previous tutorial I shared before that commodities are fungible. If soybean oil prices are so high and palm oil prices are so low, usually people will start consuming prices and people will start trading and the bandwidth will start to narrow. And that could mean opportunity for palm oil sector. So with that, let's move on to point number two, which is, is there a second peak coming up in the palm oil price? Let me flash up again what seems to be at least a near-term bottom for palm oil price. You know, the last time I felt this way was, you know, uh, at the start of 2022 when I called the bottom for China tech and look what has happened. <laughs> that seemed to be premature. So this time around, I'm not calling it too quickly that it's the bottom. Because you look in terms of the palm oil cycle, previous few years, especially from 2014 all the way to 2020, there is already a multi-year bear market, which means there is underinvestment into palm oil sector, same as all commodities. And what happened in this run-up is that COVID actually restricted supply, correct? And therefore prices were bidded up. And then the war happened. If you follow this channel, you kind of know I started covering palm oil a lot, especially in February and March of this year. That was a period where I started making big investments. And towards April, when everything seemed to be heading upwards, I thought I was due for a multi-bagger. I held on to it. And when prices corrected because Indonesia government announced that there'll be a palm oil ban, prices corrected severely. I saw it as a buying opportunity. But as we all know, Mr. Market is a great humiliator. When I got overconfident, over bullish on it, what happened subsequently is that it went into a multi-month bear market. And this is share price for Bumitama, and it actually tanked all the way down to 54 cents. Wow, so super painful. This recovery is just a small leg up and I'm not even yet at break even point. But when I mean second peak, let's pull up something that happened in 2008 to 2010 to give us a chance to understand what could replay again in this cycle. There was a peak in 2008 because there was a big boom in China, correct? There was a lot of consumption over there, there was a lot of industrialization, and then global financial crisis hit. Prices of palm oil fell tremendously, dropping by more than 60%. But then after that sharp drop, there was a stabilization phase. And then palm oil prices actually rallied way faster than most equity prices. So it actually reached back their peak in December of 2010. Now my big hope is that palm oil prices will one day see back that 7,000 ringgit per ton, but I think that is the optimistic point of view. Let me pull up some analyst explanation of what could happen for prices for 2023. This over here is the outlook of palm oil experts. And you can see over there that they are expecting fourth quarter to be hovering between 3,005 to maybe 3,800 ringgits per ton. For first half of 2023, some are expecting palm oil prices to rally all the way up to 5,000 even. And one expert in particular that caught my attention is Dorat Mystery, someone I've covered before on this channel. 
He's mentioned previously in September that palm oil prices could slump even further, correct? Because of the Indonesian government ban creating a glut. And he expected prices to drop all the way to 2000 plus. But even the experts have gotten it wrong. That on hindsight now is a near term bottom at least. And now he's revised his outlook totally. And therefore, in November, his forecast for palm oil price is 3005 to 4005 ringgit per ton. So since experts can really get it wrong, let's take their advice with a pinch of salt. It's just that sentiment doesn't seem as bearish as before anymore. But to this point of palm oil reaching back its 7,000 peak, let's pull on a few factors that could happen in 2023 just to give a balancing point of view. Analysts are expecting CPO prices to be lower actually for the entire of 2023. So that's not too optimistic an outlook. There could be strong recovery in total vegetable oil production in 2023 which includes soybean oil and sunflower oil coming up in particularly from Ukraine. The second less optimistic factor could be ample supply of soybean and oil seed that could be coming up from Argentina. And the third less optimistic factor could be sluggish demand coming from China and India because of historically high palm oil inventory already built up in these two major consumers. India, it's been true, they've been loading up a lot of palm oil in the last few months. Then China, they have been in zero COVID policy, but that has speculation running that that could end pretty soon. And just a quick glimpse into my Chinese portfolio, you see that I've been consistently buying steel. And right now, there's a big spike, right? And I'll cover that in a future video. So do smash the subscribe and stay tuned for that update. And if you'd like to trade on, for example, Alibaba or CQQQ, which is the Chinese tech index, you can actually check out our sponsor today, who is Weibo. Weibo has zero dollars in commissions and fees. It's one of the most competitive platforms right now. And not just that, you can actually get yourself some freebies with a sign up today. So if you're new to the platform, do sign up with my referral links today and you can get for yourself up to $150 worth of cash vouchers. Last few days, and saying a big thank you first, and let's head back to our tutorial. So all in all, maybe 2023 first half looks to be good, but in any case, 2022 is already record profits, which is point number three. We're seeing that at this level of CPO prices, palm oil companies are already recording record profits. Now I've actually went through first resources, Golden Agri and Bumitama Agri for a lot of data points. And to shortcut your understanding, I've actually pieced them together to give you a big picture very quickly. Take note again, for 2021, palm oil prices were already climbing. They are not low in any case. And in second quarter 2022, that's where the ban in Indonesia actually happened. Although the ban was lifted in one month, that resulted in loss of profits for these palm oil producers. Not just that, that ban actually created a glut. And that glut actually exacerbated the price downwards all the way to July. So understanding these two points, let's look firstly at first resources. You see that total sales for 9 months for 2022 has jumped by 23%, correct? But the big jump comes in EBITDA and underlying net profit, which clocked a growth of 91% and 206% respectively. So for first resources, third quarter was especially good. So the key question is, is that good performance industry-wide? Let's look at Golden Agri. You realize that EBITDA has also grown by a massive margin on a year-on-year -year basis, up by 62% and underlying profits up by 88%. In terms of quarterly growth, Golden Agri has also recorded something that is on the upward trend. Then what about for Bumitama Agri? Unfortunately, if you see the graph over here, the one in green, net profit, you realize that third quarter was a slight dip from second quarter, correct? And take note again, this is denominated in Indonesian rupiah, whereas for first resources and golden agri is denominated in US dollar. So as we know, Indonesian rupiah has actually depreciated by about 4% against US dollar for the last quarter. And therefore, Bumitama is the only one that showed a drop in terms of quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth. But in terms of year-on-year -year growth, it's still pretty strong. But the good part of Bumitama agri is they're very sensitive to a palm oil price because they focus mainly on plantations. And as we can see, the production performance has been spectacular, growing consistently, which can be seen in that Wrigley green line over there. So as long as production keeps going up and at the price of CPO is at least at this year's level, then I think Bumitama's performance for 2023 should still be pretty good. Which leads to the last point I have for you as to why palm oil companies are worth a look. Is that all three of these companies are actually exhibiting very strong balance sheet. Let's start with the biggest of them all, which is Golden Agri. You realize that in terms of debt to equity, it's at 0.5 times. However, they have a lot of cash on hand, which means that the net gearing ratio could be as low as 7% only. So if interest rates go up, no problem. 
the company doesn't have that much interest cost anyway and if inflation stays high do expect also that commodities like palm oil would also stay strong then what about for bumitama agri you can see over here the net gearing ratio which is the green line has been trending down over the last few years correct and so right now it's only at 0.2 times and last one is first resources you realize that the net debt they have is only 91 million us dollars which equates to a net debt to equity ratio of 0.07 times which is where golden agri could be at also so all three of these companies are actually very close to net cash ready in many ways they are insulated from a rising interest rate environment because of this strong balance sheet so let me know your thoughts as always smash the like button and let me invite you to some of my previous tutorials on the palm oil sector this in particular actually has some lessons that i myself learned investing in this extremely volatile period check them out it could give you a bit more insights on this industry which could be a good dividend play for 2023 take care as always and i'll see you there too goodbye